controversy, especially me putting this out during Disability Pride Month. And this is going to be an intersection of disability rights movement and wording. And so, and this is a very personal opinion. I know it will generate a lot of debates in the comments section. So guys, please be kind. Now you're wondering what I'm rabbiting on about us and not with us. And this then puts the disability community back. So what I'm saying for us and not with us is support workers, caregivers, nurses and doctors and disability advocates who might have been ex-support workers, ex-caregivers who have found a niche in the politicisation of disability. And so one word that I don't like is neurodiverse. It's a very broad term, it's a political term, and it covers everything from ADHD, autism, brain injuries, to mental illness. So then that answers the question, if you're doing a handover and say, and it's a new support worker, new caregiver, new staff member coming into a disability services facility, how do they know what behaviours are normal for that client? The simple answer, they don't. How do they know what a client's had a bad day? Um, what is a client being manipulative? And what is a client's mental illness flaring up? The simple answer is unless they read the notes and unless someone's done comprehensive notes, they really don't know. So that's the thing. Being able to understand and read notes is a huge thing. Uh, this is where, yes, person-centred wording has its place. And it is a very personal choice. Like... I always use the thing of when someone is using person-centered wording or working with someone and saying, how would they like to be referred to? Well, hopefully by their first name or a nickname or if you have to write, unfortunately, an incident report, which does happen, their pronouns they as well so just checking on that one as well check how they like to be referred to is it a full name is it a nickname do they go by a different last name because it's not safe for them to have their original name and they've gone through all the legal processes to have that changed and that's the other thing their relationship status needs to be respected but I diverge and so guys this is where using the correct and accurate terms and you might need to do a bit of googling but I will do a blog post a bit of a glossary over the weekend so ADSD is the new term for Asperger's and autism it has all been rolled into one and autism is a spectrum of abilities, like humanity is a spectrum of the good, bad and ugly. Then ADHD is, again, ADHD and ADD have been rolled into one. So ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and ADD is Attention Deficit Disorder. Um, one was thought to be more common in girls, but we've now found that it's just a different presentation. Girls are able, because they're taught from a very young age, how to mask, how to socially fit in. Um, so they're told, don't sit still. They're told, sit still, don't fidget, don't do this. We all know someone who, to be able to concentrate, has to be doodling, has to have craft in their hands, 
absolutely amazing craft that might even sell it as a side hustle or as a hobby or a full-on business. And so this is where the presentations differ. Then we have brain damage. And brain damage, depending on when the person was injured, how their brain was injured, and what behaviours came out of it, they might develop ADHD-like symptoms. They might also develop things like movement disorders, balance disorders, competence disorders. They might regress emotionally. But there is a lot of physical therapy, physiotherapy that you can do to have these back up as well. But we are, as a society, moving away from the medicalization of disability to a community-based approach. But that's not to say stopping all the treatments is a good thing. In fact, a lot of people with disabilities need that medical intervention to keep them alive, especially physical disabilities as well. Um, then we have mental illness. Now, I'll freely admit, I don't know a lot about mental illness. I'm researching a video of how to deal with transitions, like your big life transitions, like from school to further training, further training to work, or from a school environment to a day centre, um, from a day centre to a supported workplace, um, if that's an option for someone as well. So mental illness, obviously, we're hearing a lot more about mental health these days, much more than anxiety, depression as well, because it's come out of the closet as well. Um, We've come a long way in medical treatments as well, but there is the danger of medicalizing the human experience, medicalizing tough times, medicalizing um, character building experiences, medicalizing mistakes that you can learn from. So this is the thing, I'm not not at all saying that depression and anxiety aren't real. I know myself, they are very, very real. And since the Panini, I've heard that referred to, that time referred to that, and it doesn't get demonetized, that it has exploded because of the restrictions that were placed on people worldwide. And that actually opened up a conversation for a lot of people who were in disability accommodations saying, welcome to my life. This is how my life goes. And so guys, that's a really interesting one to get into, but we have to realize that there is treatments available and I will be doing a further video on those treatments as well. In fact, today I'm going in to do some further things around my NDIS paperwork and hoping to talk to some professionals at the uni about how mental health is treated and recorded and why the outliers aren't included when they're doing research uh, outside the norm, when they really should be, because that would significantly change the results of the research, because people with disabilities for a long time haven't actually been included in psychological research, um, as well as women, and that was because there is too many variables. Now we're seeing that things are changing and there is a lot more research going into the mental health of people with disabilities, their caregivers, their support workers, their family and friends, as there has been an acknowledgement that this is happening. So guys, um, we're over and above my limits for Hey guys, Andrea. So guys, we are over and above my goal in sharing. 
so for monetization so let's aim for 100 watch hours or even a thousand by the end of this month and let's aim for 100 subscribers as well so guys you can help me do that by liking sharing subscribing it all helps this channel grow because especially during disability pride month these issues need to be talked about and I know I'm a bit of a lone wolf in the desert talking about disabilities and the NDIS from a lived experience. It actually is a calculated risk for me in being a participant and not a provider. And so that makes it a little bit more challenging. I am one man team I sometimes do have a support worker edit and script the videos and so that's why you're seeing a little bit more editing and a little more professionalism um, guys as well but in, especially with my health being so up and down and there being so much drama that I can't talk about in my life at the moment it has been a struggle to keep the YouTube going and this is why I see so many YouTubers have a team around them. Um, guys, please know that you're appreciated, uh, that liking, sharing, commenting really does help the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next